Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan Lugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Sunday, August 4th. Jaguars training camp practice number 10 in the books. Had two practices this weekend. Obviously, the in-stadium practice yesterday on Saturday. Practice today as well. It was an abbreviated practice. Ended at 10.15, which is about an hour earlier than normal. Obviously, there's some weather expected in the area with the tropical storm situation uh, coming Uh, in the coming days, and so obviously I hope everyone stays safe out there, but I think the Jaguars might have to adjust a little bit of what's going on practice schedule-wise. We'll see how it all plays out, but again, abbreviated practice today, no pads today, so it was a a chill, very chill practice. 11-on-11 periods were not nearly as intense as you've seen over the last week since pads have come on, right? But uh, I still think it was a day where there was plenty of energy out there from coaches and players. I think they were able to accomplish what they were looking to get done today, and uh, we'll dive into it. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. Really appreciate y'all support, whether you're tuning in, whatever it may be, y'all are awesome. So Jaguars Offensive Coordinator Press Taylor spoke with the media this morning. Um, Talked about Javon Foster, Jaguars rookie fourth round pick, the experience that he plays with, that he has coming from Missouri, having started for so long uh, at Missouri, at left tackle, a little bit of experience at right tackle, but mostly at left tackle. And he has been moving around for the Jaguars so far, left and right side, but um, talks about he knows what he needs to get done in a given situation, a given play, and he has his way of getting it done. And I do think you see that. I've talked about Javon Foster and one-on-ones a little bit. He just looks like he knows how to handle himself. And he's got length. I think he's a good short area athlete. Like He's not going to run the fastest 40-yard dash. But in a short area, the area that tackles usually play You know, when you're protecting the passer, he knows how to get the job done. And he's got the athleticism and the length and the strength, I think, to uh, eventually. You know, Right now, he's OT4. Obviously, you have some injuries at tackle that you're dealing with at the moment. But I think that he has a chance to really make it in this league, definitely as a swing player, potentially as a starter at some point in his career. Uh, Press Taylor also raved about Gabe Davis, his ability to just win and and come down with catches in a variety of different situations, different route concepts, different uh, plays, different moments within a game or a practice. And he said that, you know, we've seen that. In Buffalo, but you needed to see it here once pads come on uh, to really, you know, verify and validate what you think you're getting. And and they've seen that. And he had another good day today, Gabe Davis did. So I think that Press Taylor is very happy with that. Also talked about, you know, he's been happy with Luke Fortner, said he's doing an awesome job in terms of, you know, first couple years starting in the league. Now you bring in Mitch Morris, who's going to start at center. And so they're making Luke Fortner practice a lot at guard and have that versatility. Because if you're going to be a backup on the interior, you kind of need to have some versatility. And uh, they're very pleased with how that's going for Luke Fortner so far. You know, I don't have a lot to say about that. I've talked a lot about what I think Luke Fortner brings to the team at this point, so we don't need to dive into that. But, um, yeah, Press Taylor encouraged by what he's been seeing so far. And he did talk about Trevor Lawrence as well. You know, why were those, why were those interceptions popping up in camp? And then early on, and then since then, since pads have come on, he's been brilliant, you know, completing almost every pass he he attempts and team and not throwing any interceptions, not throwing any balls that are getting tipped, uh, scoring points when the opportunities present themselves. He did, confirm kind of what Doug said, where Doug said, we don't want you to be reckless. Like we don't want you to go outside of the realm of, you know, playing smart quarterback, but in certain situations, are there times early on in camp where you're going to try something that you probably wouldn't try as you're working yourself up towards the season? The answer is yes. I think that's part of it. I still think that the defense was a little overwhelming early on in camp getting adjusted to Ryan Nielsen's defense, how fast they play, especially the corners, the actual speed that they bring now. Uh, There's so much more speed in the secondary than there was in years past, and then the man coverage as well. All those, I think, were combining 
for Trevor Lawrence struggling a little bit and having a little bit of frustration early on, but he is locked in at this point. Looking at injury situations, Josh Peterson was waived slash injured reserve, so as long as he's not signed or, or claimed by another team, he will revert to the injured reserve, which uh, I would expect that to happen, certainly. Lorenzo Lingard was waived, not injury-related, but he was waived running back Lorenzo Lingard. The Jaguars made two uh, corresponding roster moves. They signed tight end Chris Myrick. I believe that's how you pronounce it. He's wearing number 38 now. And then running back Gary Brightwell replaces Lorenzo Lingard and is wearing the same number, number 35. So just a couple guys to keep an eye on as you know we're less than a week away from the first preseason game. Ventrell Miller was practicing with an orange penny. He was limited. He's got a hand situation going on that's wrapped up in like a little cast type of thing. Cam Robinson was limited with his shoulder, but he did participate in practice, so that was good, but was limited. Ezra Cleveland out there with the guys doing some things to um, you know, kind of condition, build up strength. Same thing with Cooper Hodges, but neither of those guys were actually practicing today. So you do have a lot of offensive line situations going on injury-wise, but it's good that Cam Robinson's back limited. Uh, Anton Harrison's still in the concussion protocol. Um, Ezra Cleveland looks like he's not going to be out for a long time, uh, certainly. And then Cooper Hodges, he's dealing with a back um, I don't think either of those guys looks like they're going to be out for, for a significant period of time, but we haven't gotten an update from the team on any of that. And then when you look at 11 on 11 today, you didn't have like uh, OLDL one-on-ones. You didn't have wide receiver cornerback one-on-ones. So the only real action you got was 11 on 11. And that was even abbreviated again, a very short practice, no pads, but uh, they were running 11 on 11 on both fields. I think from a timing perspective that that enabled them to get more work done because they were going to shorten the practice. So I wasn't able to see everything going on. I made sure that every Trevor Lawrence rep out there for 11 on 11, uh, I was able to see, and he didn't have an incomplete pass. Again, no pads, very relaxed environment. I don't want to call it a walkthrough. It wasn't the receivers and everybody. They were going at least close to full speed, but it certainly wasn't the same intensity you've seen over the last week or so. But Lawrence did not have an incomplete pass during 11-on-11. 11 11. Completed pass to Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, another one to Gabe Davis. So again, Davis continues to stand out. Bigsby was running well. Uh, even though you're not hitting, you could see some of the space the offensive line was opening up for Bigsby, and he was able to get the most out of it. Uh, C.J. Beathard was able to complete a pass to Brian Thomas Jr., where Brian Thomas Jr. had to go up and get it a little bit. It was a good play by him, a good throw by Beathard. Uh, Beathard also completed one to Kirk, which was really nice. I think that the Mac Jones 11-on-11 um, reps mostly were on the other practice field that I wasn't able to see. And then you also saw like the starting defense going up against second string, starting offense going up against second string, and they're wanting to work guys in different situations, no doubt about it. Uh, but um, I thought that what you saw offensively looked good today. Lawrence, he had a strike to Evan Ingram down the field. It was a great pass. Uh, had to really rip it in there, and he was able to spin it and, and complete that one. He also completed a deep ball to Brandon Cooks, which in a real live setting, game setting, I said Brandon Cooks, Elijah Cooks, excuse me. Um, probably a sack or a play where Lawrence really needs to escape the pocket. Didn't feel the pressure to do that in this situation, but completed a really nice pass to him down the field, Elijah Cooks. Um, Adam Gotsis did have a run stuff. Brevin Easton caught a touchdown pass from C.J. Beathard on the far field. I was able to see. I did see Mac Jones. He came in late on the uh, closer field to the uh, to the facility and Mac Jones did throw a pass that got deflected by Christian Braswell. Good to see Braswell uh, continuing to compete and make plays. Saw DJ Coleman making some plays. He had a run stuff. And it's difficult when you're not tackling. Um, like, would he have been able to make that play against Travis Etienne one-on-one -on -one in the backfield? I'm not sure, but he did what he needed to do for that rep in practice, certainly. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one today. Again, just not a whole lot to glean from this type of practice. I think the Jaguars are moving in the right direction in a lot of ways. You obviously want to get healthy on the offensive line. I think that's the biggest issue right now that they're facing. Anton Harrison concussion protocol, Cam Robinson shoulder, but 
limited in practice, so that's a step in the right direction. Ezra Cleveland not practicing with the leg. Cooper Hodges, one of your probably key backups, dealing with the back, hasn't really practiced in close to a week. So, yeah, really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.